Learning a programming language can be a bit scary or hard if you've never written any line of code before. So my goal in this video is to actually make learning programming language really easy. So in this video, we'll actually learn JavaScript. And by the end of this video, you'll know the fundamentals of JavaScript to create a lot of projects and you'll actually be able to expand your knowledge by learning other topics that I haven't covered in this video. So without wasting any time, let's get right into it. So the first topic that we're going to cover is a console log so we use this to actually test our code usually so take this as if you're actually trying to see what signature you want to use so if you want to try different signatures that you want to use you actually take out a piece of paper then you, you actually write different signatures then you choose from those signatures the one that you like right and also if you want to actually test your handwriting you literally take out a piece of paper then you actually write your name or whatever way that comes to your mind to actually see which handwriting sticks with you or looks much nicer right so in this case a console log is basically that piece of paper so we use this to actually test different things before we actually push the website into the world so that every other person can use so we make sure that everything works fine by actually using the console log to test our code right so that's basically what a console log does or what it's usually used for so without wasting any time let's get into the code so that it makes sense so like i said the first thing that we're going to talk about is console log so for that to get started i just created a folder on the desktop which is called js tutorial then inside that folder we have two files over here the first one is called index.html the next one is called main.js so i'm using visual studio code for actually writing the code and you should be using this because even when you start working there's a higher chance that you'll be using visual studio code to write the code so i think i recommend you guys to actually download that so get in the habit of using visual studio code you can use notepad or notepad plus plus but i recommend you guys to use visual studio code or whatever editor that's out there that's usually used by most companies so yeah i'll be using visual studio code so to get started, I'll just right click in the folder that I've created, which is JS tutorial. So I'll right click, then I'll click on show more options. But in your case, you should see an option that says open with code once you right click in that folder. But in my case, I need to click show more options. Then I'll click open with code. Then once that's open, then I'll just show you what the HTML file looks like. So this is just the boilerplate that was created for us by Visual, by Visual Studio Code, but I'll start from scratch. So what you need to do is to just inside the HTML file, click shift on your keyboard, then press one to show the exclamation mark, then press enter. So there should be an exclamation mark first, then press enter. Then all this code will be created for you. Then inside the body tag or inside the body element, inside here we'll just create a script. So we'll just say script, then press enter. Then just after the T of the first word script, because there are two words here. So just after the, the, the T over there, just press space on your keyboard, then press SRC, type SRC, then press an equal sign. This will automatically give you this double quotes there. Then inside the double quotes, so just inside this double quotes, just type the name of the file, the JS file or the JavaScript file that's over here. So in our case, it's the main.js file. So we'll type a dot, then a forward slash, then main.js. If you've named it something else, just make sure you type the name of the file here. Then the extension should be .js. Well, so that HTML can see that this is a JavaScript file, right? So yeah, don't be concerned about everything that I've written here. So we'll mainly be focusing on JavaScript, not HTML. So this is just to link our HTML file with the JavaScript file so we can test our JavaScript in the browser, right? So yeah, you can just copy everything that's over here. You can just type it on your site. So we'll close the HTML file because we're not concerned with that. So like I said, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the console log. So I'll just make notes here. So it's just say. So like I said, the first thing we'll be concerned about is the console log. 
So to write your console log, you just need to type the word console. The word console. Then after the E, just type a dot. So this dot that just basically tells JavaScript that we want to access some information that we want to access something that's related to the console, right? So for example, if a person if so for example if we want to know a person's age, we'll type a person, then a dot, then age, right? So that means we want to access their age, that person's age. If we want to access their name, we'll say person, then a dot, then uh the name, right? So dot name, right? So what's on the left of the dot is the main theme that has information then just after the dot on the right is what we actually want to access from what's on the left right so in this case we want to access log so just type log so this is what we want to access then you can open the closing then you can just open and close the the brackets like that then inside the brackets you can just type a number or a string I'll explain what I'll explain what a string is when you get to the data types. So a number can be one or whatever number you can think of. So we just type 200. Then we can save this file. So inside the closing and so inside the opening and closing parentheses or brackets we've typed 200, right? So what are we going to do with this? So this helps us to actually see what's happening in our code, right? So to see this number that we've typed here, we'll just go to the browser. So you need to open the HTML file in the browser. So just go to the folder that you you created the files in, then double click on the index the HTML file. In our case, is this. So I'm using Edge. So this is open here. Then once that's open, as you can see, it's a blank page because we've not written any HTML. So just click F12 on your keyboard. This will open DevTools to actually test your code. So we'll type, so we'll just press F12. This will open the console. So over here, as you can see, we don't see anything, right? So that's because I haven't refreshed the page. So I need to refresh the page. So refresh the page on your side as well. You can do this by pressing this button here or you can press or you can or you can hold control then press r this will do the same thing so just refresh then as you can see we see the 200 that we've written there you can change this to any number like that then you can save the file by, by pressing control and s then go to the browser then refresh the page we see that number that we've written inside the brackets so yeah you can also write a string here I'll explain what a string is, like I said, later on. We'll get to the string later on. So a string basically is anything that's inside the double quotes or single quotes. But they need to be, there needs to be an opening and a closing code, right? In our case, for the single quotes, it'll be two quotes like that. So you can just press the quotes on your keyboard, which is next to the backslash. So this is an opening. Then this is a closing code. Then inside here, we can type hello. You can type a word type a number or anything right you can just type hello inside the codes like this this will give us an error so let me save the file then go into the browser then refresh the page as you can see we see this error that says uncaught error reference error hello is not defined so we'll get that error so to make sure that we don't get the error to type away you need to make sure that it is inside double quotes or inside single quotes so you can just get rid of this and then press the codes then you get the double codes then you get the single codes i mean then you can type hello and save the file by pressing ctrl s then go to the browser then refresh the page we'll see the word hello like i said you can also use double codes these are single codes as you can see there's an opening single code this is closing single code then inside that we have the word hello then we can get rid of that then you can press shift then the code on your keyboard which is next to the backslash like i said then you can press that then we have an opening and a closing double quotes then inside there you can type hello then press ctrl s to save 
then go to the browser, then refresh, then we get the same thing, hello. So you can choose to use the single quotes or the double quotes. Then you can also write booleans here. I'll get to that later on. So you can type the word true. This will just output true in the console. So if you refresh, we get true. And also type false. It's something that's that's known by JavaScript, so you won't get an error. So you can type true or false, then that would be fine, you'll get false. But if you type yes, like that, you'll get an error because that's known by JavaScript, so you get an error like that. So yeah, those are some of the things that you can use inside the, the log. So there are different ways to, there are different techniques that you can use inside this, this log. So this is just the basic. So yeah, you can type anything to test your code and see what ha what's happening in your code. So that's it about the logs. Now let's move on to the next topic. The next topic that we're gonna cover is variables. So a variable is usually used to store some information in there or some data. So you can use it anywhere else in the application without having to actually write that data everywhere, right? For example, if you actually want to see if a warehouse contains biscuits, you'll actually go through each and every box in the warehouse and the box that's written biscuits outside, that's the box that contains biscuits inside, right? Also a box that's written cheese, you know that there's cheese inside that box, right? So we also define variables by actually writing the name of what is actually contained in that variable so we can know what is in that variable. Also someone else, if they're actually reading your code, they can know based on the name of the variable, what is contained inside that variable. So we actually use the variable to actually store some data so we can use it anywhere else in our application. So let's get into the code so I can explain variables much further. So now we're gonna talk about variables. So like I said, a variable is just to store some data. So I'm just gonna get rid of this console log. So to create a variable in JavaScript, all you need to do is to type the word const. So C O N S T const or you can type let like that or you can type var like that. So these are different different ways of actually declaring a variable. The older way is this one, which is the var, which is short for variable. So we'll just use that. So you can search why we use certain uh word like the var, the let and const like which one to use for a different scenario. So like I said, we're gonna use var. So just type the word var, V-A-R, like that. Then after the R, just type, or just click on the space to make sure that you separate whatever you're gonna type next. Then after this, so after you've created a space, you can name your variable, right? You can name it anything you want. So in this case, I'll just type name, so like I said, you need to make sure that the name of the variable actually describes what will be contained inside this variable. So in our case, I type name, so I should write a name of a person or a name of something, right? So yeah, and also if you just do this and save the file and go to the browser and refresh, you won't get anything in there. So this is just declaring a variable or initializing it, you're not really storing anything inside this variable. For example, if you have a box, then you just name that box biscuits. If you haven't really put anything inside the box, then there won't be biscuits, right? The biscuits ju can't just come up from out of nowhere and get inside the box. You need to actually pack those biscuits inside the box if they need if they need to be there right so in that case you can declare a name if you know that you're going to change this layer on they can change it at that time but if you know that you want to actually store something inside this variable you can store it at that moment you're create you're creating that variable right so in that case you want to test and see if whatever you're going to store inside this variable we can actually see it right so to actually to actually store something inside a variable we need to create another space after the name so this is the name of the variable then type space then an equal sign then space then you can store the name inside the double quotes or single quotes right like i said we use that for a string so if you want to type a word 
you need to make sure it's inside double quotes or single quotes because otherwise you get an error. So inside the single quotes, I'll type my name like that. Then I can save the file. One thing I want to mention, if you don't really have space there between the equal sign, so you can get rid of the spaces, you won't get an error. I'm just doing this so that everything can look clean, but it is mandatory or it is required to have a space between the keyword for declaring a variable and the actual name of the variable, right? So there needs to be a, sp a space there, but after the name of a variable, in between the equal sign, there can be no spaces, right? So yeah, we did that. Then what you need to get in the habit of doing, every time you finish your line of code, you need to end with a semicolon like that. But if you don't want to, because JavaScript is not that strict, you can get rid of that. You won't have any issues, right? So we can save the file. Then if you go to the browser, then refresh the file. As you can see, we don't really see that name there, right? So like I said, we use the console log to actually test our code, right? If you want to see that name appearing here and see if it's actually appearing the way it should, then we should use console log, right? So this is our paper where we actually see the things that we want to test, right? So we'll go to the next line. So just press enter when you're when you're on the last line here. When you're on the at the end of the line, just press enter. This will take you to the other line. Then you can type console dot log. Then inside the brackets you can type the name of the variable that you want to test or that you want to see in the console. So just type name. This is our name of our variable, which is this one, right? So you can press save. You can save this by going to file, then pressing save here, or you can press control and S on your keyboard. This will save the file. Then if you go to the browser and refresh, we'll see whatever is stored inside that variable. We won't see the word name, but we'll see what's inside this variable called name. We can also change this to age, but this is also this is obviously not following the explanation that I did because what we're storing inside this variable, which is called age, is not an age, so it's it's a name. So, but I'm just doing this so I can explain that you, what you actually enter inside this log is actually the name of the variable, not the actual thing that's after the equal sign. So in this case, it's just age. I can save the file, then I refresh. Don't be any problem. So we'll just see that, right? So I'll just change this to to name. So to actually select different things, to select multiple uh, ways in the code that have the same characters, as you can see, there's A, there's G, there's E. Then you can press Control and D. It will select the next way that has those characters. So then you can change, you can type anything on your keyboard, then it'll rewrite whatever you had. So we'll type name. So we can save, then we have the same thing if we refresh the page, right? So also you can store, so this is a string, you can also store a number. So we'll create another variable, we'll say var, then a space, then h, then an equal sign, then I'll say 35, that's not my age, by the way. So I'll say 35, then I'll create another console log. So I can go below here just by pressing enter. Then I'll say console.log. Then inside the brackets, I'll type the name of the variable that I want to test, which is age. Then I'll press control S to save, then go to the browser, then refresh the page by pressing here or pressing control R on a keyboard. So I'll just press this. Then this will show us the 35 there. One thing that I just want to actually let you guys know to actually identify different things that are happening in your console logs. So as you can see, we are only seeing what's inside the log, which is whatever is inside the, the variables, whatever is stored there. Those we see got layer, we see 35. That's because name is got layer and age is 35, right? What we can do to actually see where this comes from, just before whatever you want to test, you can just type double quotes or single quotes. So I'll just get rid of everything so that everything can look easier to understand. So type single quotes, you can do a double quotes. Then in, the in this case, I'll type name in a string, 
So this is this is not a variable. It's just anything that I just want to name whatever I want to see in this console log. So we're saying name. Then after the way that you've typed there, just type a colon. So I usually do this. It's not mandatory. You can do this however you want. This is just to give you some of the things that I do. Then after the last uh, closing code or double code, you can just do a comma. Then after the comma, you can type the name of the variable or the function that you want to call. But in, the case we're, in this case, we're dealing with variables. So I'll say name. So this refers to the variable name. This doesn't refer to the variable name. This is just anything that we want to see to actually show us that whatever is going to be displayed after the comma is actually has this description, right? We can actually write anything here. We can say name of a person to make it more descriptive. So we can type that. Then if we save the file, then go to the browser and refresh. We'll see this information first. Then just after that colon, we see that variable, right? Or we see what's in stored inside the variable name, which is after the comma, right? So that's after that comma. So we can have different commas here. You have as many commas as you want. I can type another comma. I can say age. This will display age also in that line. So we see name of a person that we see at layout. Then we see day five. You can have another comma and say inside the single quotes and say food then save then we'll see that as well so you can have as many commas as you want but usually i have only one comma then on the left hand side of the comma it's just a description of what will be on the right hand side so this is a variable then this is just a description inside the double quotes right so yeah that's just how to uh how i usually do this so that's it with the variable so to declare a variable just type the word var or let or const then a space then the name of a variable this can be anything a name that you can think of that you will describe what is stored inside that variable right then an equal sign then the value for that variable in this case it's the string which stores the name or the characters k-a-t-l-e-g-o so yeah that's it with variables so now let's go to the next topic then the next topic that we're going to cover is about data types so there are different data types that are available in javascript the first one is a string so a string is just anything that's inside double quotes and single quotes and also backticks so anything that's inside the double quotes so there should be an opening and a closing double quotes or an opening and a closing single quotes then anything that's inside there or in between those quotes that's called a string so you can write any character in here it can be a number it can be a letter or it can be any symbol that's available right so yeah that's a string then we also have a boolean a boolean is basically true or false so those are the values for a boolean so a true is basically like saying yes then false is basically like saying no, right? So we use true or false in programming. So the next data type that we're gonna talk about is a number. So a number is self-explanatory. So this is just a number, it can be zero or 0, 0.0 or zero point anything. So that's just a number. Then we have another data type, which is called an object. So this is basically like a dictionary. So if you want to actually find the explanation of a word, you will actually read whatever word you're looking for, then you'll actually know the understanding or the, the actual meaning of that word, right? So yeah, there are key value pairs. There's a key to actually identify the, the, the word that you're looking for. Then there's the actual value, which is the explanation of that word, right? We have arrays as well, which fall in the object category. So they fall together. So there's an actual object and there's the, and the arrays so but they've grouped them together and they're called an object data type so that's another data type that's available so now let's get into the code so that they can make sense so now we're gonna be dealing with data types i'll show you what each data type looks like so like i said we have a data type that's called a string which i've already showed you so it can be anything inside the single codes anything inside the double codes okay, so this is a string can type anything here it can be any word for example hello 
like that or you can type a number or you can type a character i mean a uh, symbol like that anything you can think of so you can type anything here so a string can have any character or any number or any symbol right it accepts anything then we have another data type which is a boolean so a boolean is true or false like i said so if you type the word true javascript understands that this is true so it's already built in javascript it understands that word but if you type yes javascript doesn't know what this means then there's false as well this false also javascript un understands this it doesn't understand no right and also you need to make sure that it is written like this don't use an uppercase like that because usually when you're writing things in english they start with the uppercase but in javascript you need to make sure you use lower cases for these words right so in this case you're using false and true and we write them in lower cases right so yeah that's it with booleans it's just true or false then we have another data type which is called a number so i've already seen this so a number can be anything it can be one two three four or whatever number you can think of or 0 0.47 that's a number as well so these are just numbers it's just yeah it's just a number so those are that's another data type then we also have an object which i'll get in depth in explaining it just now so an object to create an object what you need to do is to use the curly braces so an opening and a closing curly brace so on your sh on your so on your keyboard just press a shift press shift then press the square brackets which is next to p or press that button that's next to p on your keyboard this will open the curly braces so just press shift then the button next to the p on your keyboard this will open an opening and a closing curly brace like that then in between here we have key value pairs so like I, i've given an example of a dictionary so in a dictionary if you're looking for the explanation of the word uh, verb or of the word uh, chemistry you'll look for that word then you'll know the meaning of that word once you find that in the dictionary right so that's the same thing here if we're looking for the word chemistry, so we'll type chemistry here, like that. Then, to actually make it in a way that this looks like a dictionary, you can actually press shift, then the button next to the L for the colon. Then, just after the colon, we can type anything in here. So, this it's the same way as a variable so i'll just go up at the top there so that i can make things simpler so for example i've given an example of a variable which for an age which is like that so it's age then equal sign then 35 so if i want if you want to do the same thing here to know the age of a person we can just remove this chemistry and type age then if you want to set a value or store something inside this this property here, here inside this key so this is called a key in in an object then just after the colon we type 35 so the difference is with a variable we use equal sign then in an object we use a colon right so we say h was which is the name of the key then a colon then after the colon is what will be stored inside this key, right? In our case, it's 35, right? So to actually put this in a real world scenario, so let's say we have a person, I want to store information about that person, want to store their name and their age, right? For that, we'll create a variable, then we'll say person, then a equal sign, then the curly braces, so this, tells javascript that we are want to that we want to create an object right then here we just type h then the then the colon then 35 then to store another information about this person inside this object all you need to do is a comma 
then after the comma, it tells JavaScript that we are done with the first part. We, have, we are done with the key value pair here. So this is the key. Then after the colon is the value. Then after the comma, we want to store another information. So we want to store their name. So we'll say name, then the colon, then what we want to store inside this key, which is name. So it will be my name like that, right? So this is, this whole thing here is an object, right? So we are storing this object inside, inside a variable called person, right? Then we're going to use console log to actually test things. Like I said, we're going to use this all the time. So we'll say console.log. Then inside the brackets, we're going to type the, the variable. So we need to make sure we type the variable first. Then like I've mentioned, when dealing with the console log, we're explaining what console log is. What's on the left hand side of the of the of a dot over here, what's on the left hand side is something that contains certain things or same information. Then what's what's on the right hand side of the dot is anything that's asso associated with that thing that's on the left hand side. So the dot is just to distinguish the two. So what's on what's on the left is the main thing that has different things than what's then what's on the right is actually what's associated with what's on the left, right? So in this case, we have a person, then we know that age is associated with this person. We know name is associated with this person, right? Then to access the age, we just type a dot, then we type age. Then that will tell JavaScript that we want to access the age of this person. So this is an object, right? So you can press Control S to save then go to the browser, then we need to refresh, then we'll see 35. And the reason we, we are not seeing name, we're not, and the reason we're not seeing age or seeing the word person is because we're actually only accessing the age of this person. So like I said, what's on the left is the main thing, then the dot, then what's on the right hand side is what's associated with what's on the left hand side, right? So in this case, we wanted to access the age of this person. So we just type the person dot, then age. Then that would give us the age of the person. Then if we type a comma here, like I said, we can have as many commas as we want to separate the things that you want to see in the console. Then we'll say person again, then a dot, then name. This will show us the name of the person. So it will access this thing here. So we're saying person that just grabs this variable here. Then the dot, this dot just tells JavaScript that, you, that this is a uh, an object, but sometimes it might not be an object, so it'll give you an error in that case, but because of course it's an object, you don't give us an error, so we type a dot. Then that dot will just basically access everything. Then what's after the dot will access everything that's over here, that's inside the object, right? So we only have age and name, so we can type age or name just after the dot. So that's why I type age and name there. So if I save the file and go to the browser and refresh, we'll see 35 and got out there. So that's because they're accessing what's inside that object. But if I say person, I create another comma to separate things inside this console log. If I say person dot, uh, maybe you want to access the height of the person if you say height like that, then save the file, we'll get an error because height is not defined inside this object. So there's no, there's nothing uh, of the key height there. So let's say, for example, in a dictionary, we want to know the explanation of the word Tila. If it's not there, I, mean, I just, I just, that's, that, that's just a random way. So if you want to actually access that, if it's not available in the dictionary, of course, we won't find it. So also, if we do that here, we want to access the height of this person. So that's not given in there. So that information is not given. So if I go to the browser and refresh, you should not see anything. So we, we get the word undefined. That just tells us that this thing is not available inside the person object, right? So this is an object, it does not have the key height. That's why we don't get 
any information about that. We just get undefined. Also, if I just type, uh, for example, if you want to know the school they are from, like that, we'll also get undefined because it's not available in there. So we get undefined because school is not available inside here. So yeah, that's it about the, the objects. There are different things you can do with objects, but this is just how to create an object over here at the top. Then inside here is just a way to access different keys inside that object to see their values, right? So yeah, that's it about the objects. I'm just giving you the basics. Then you can learn further on objects, right? You can learn, you can take this a bit further. So yeah, that's it about the objects. Let's go to the next topic. So another topic that we're going to cover is functions. So function is basically like a way to group your code together that have the same goal, right? So for example, if you want to create some functionality for a button for decreasing the volume, you actually need to group that code together so that that code don't mix with other code. So you group this code together. So this code's main purpose will be to decrease the volume or to increase the volume, right? So we use that code and we group it together. Then we can name it with whatever name that we can think of that is that explains the functionality of that thing that you want to achieve, right? So yeah, a function is basically a group of code that is grouped together that have the same goal or that aims to achieve the same goal. So for example, if you actually decrease the volume today to 70% on your TV, then tomorrow you want to decrease the volume further down, you'll actually need to actually determine what the current value of the volume is, right? So today is 70%, so I've reduced this to 70%. Then tomorrow, if I want to reduce the volume again, then I need to determine what value is at current moment. So it will be a 70, then I'll take it down. When the user clicks the, the volume down, then I'll take the volume down to 65 or 60, right? Then if they click the up volume, or the volume up then i'll take the volume up to 75 or 80 right so that functionality that whole functionality will be inside a function then you call that function when the user takes the volume up button or the volume down button right so yeah that's why we use functions to group the code that have the same goal right so i'll actually explain what a function looks like in the code so let's get into the code so now we're gonna talk about functions. So I've explained what a function is and like the whole idea about functions. So to create a function, I'm just gonna remove everything that's there. So I'm just gonna remove that. So to create a function, you just need to type the keyword function, then a space, then the name of the function, like we deal with variables, where we type the, the keyword var, then space, then the name of the variable then in this case we're creating a function so we just type the weight function then space then the name of the function so what do we need this function to do so in our case we just need to return a list of numbers right so for that we just say we just call this function return numbers so it needs to be descriptive as well just like a variable then you need to type or to key in the per, the parentheses or the brackets like that. So this is a function, but for this function to be fully a function, because r right now, if I save this, we'll actually get an error. So that's because this is actually not fully done. So the, the first part is to type the keyword, then the space, then the name of the function, then the brackets, then the last thing is the killer braces. So an opening and a closing killer brace. Then everything that's inside here, just like an object, everything that's inside there will be interpreted as related to that function, right? So if I save this now, we should not get an error and we should not get anything because this function doesn't do anything. So right now I'll press enter just after, just inside the killer braces, I'll just press enter that will take me to the next line and we actually create this nicely. So inside this function, we will just want to return the numbers. So like I said here, we just want to return numbers. So we're gonna use the keyword return. So this keyword just basically 
helps you so that when you actually call this function or when you actually fire this function or when you actually want this function to run, it will actually return something, right? It will actually give you something back that is actually returned inside that function, right? For, so for example, when I use the keyword return, it is understood by JavaScript, so you won't get an error. So if you say return, then if you say return, then an, an array, then say one, two, three, four, five. If I save this, then refresh the page, you won't get anything, right? So this function just returns numbers. So we use the word, the keyword return, then you need to make sure that there's a space. Every time you use the keyword, just make sure that there's a space, then whatever you want to store inside that keyword. So right now we just want to return this array here, right? So like I said, to create a function, you need to create a function when you know that you have a bunch of code that is related to to each other, right? So in that case, you just want to return the numbers, so that's fine. But what you can do is to just copy that or cut that, then you're just gonna go at the top here, just before the return, we're gonna type, gonna create a variable with the var, so var, var then numbers, then equal sign, then an array of numbers. So this variable contains that array. So I can just type numbers here instead of typing that array. So just after the return, make sure that there's a space, then whatever you store inside this return. So now I can actually uh, store these numbers. So now if you call this function, you actually see these numbers, right? So if I go at the bottom here and do another return and say numbers again or anything else that you want to return, that will not work because there can only be one return statement inside a function, especially at the end of the function or at the uh, main body of the function, right? But if it's inside uh, an if statements or the if else statements which we'll get into, then that's fine. But if it's at the outside exposed like this, there can only be one of them, right? So yeah, we have only that one return statement there. Then now if I save this and refresh the page, we won't see anything again because this is just creating the function and storing that code together. Then we can use this code anywhere we want. So for example, if you want to actually run this function or actually call it, we can actually just do console.log, as you know, then we can call the name of the function which is to return numbers then now you can just do that then save the file if i do this then go over here and refresh we'll just see that information and it looks ugly it doesn't really do anything so that's because i just typed the name of the function so in the browser it just tells us this is a function and it has that information there which is all the code that i've written here right so it just shows us it just shows us what's inside the body of the function right but if you actually want to call the function and see what the function does and see if it's behaving the way it should, you should type the brackets there at the end of the name of the function, just like you did over here. So you need to make sure that you type that. So that's why you're doing it like that. So this brackets just tells JavaScript that we are calling this function, which is called return numbers. Now, if I save the file, it should show us the numbers. So it's going to show us what's return in here so now if i save this it shows us those numbers which are these numbers here but if i don't have this return statement here or this line of code if i comment this out so i'll get into comments in a bit so if i save this then refresh the page we get undefined because it doesn't really do anything this function doesn't really return anything that's of use so we'll get undefined there, right? So to create a comment, a comment is basically a way to document your code or to disable certain lines of code. So for example, here, I just wanted to disable this line of code. So what I did is I use double forward slash. So you can do double forward slash like that, two forward slashes. There shouldn't be a space in between. You can just type the forward slash, then another forward slash right next to each other, then that will disable that line of code. 
Another way you can do this is to use a forward slash that is star or that asterisk. Then that will disable everything from here going down. But if you want to end that code, that uh, commenting here at the end of the S, all you can do is to do another asterisk, then a forward slash again. So you start with a forward slash, then asterisk, then you end with an asterisk, then a forward slash, right? So everything that's inside the asterisk will be disabled. Then at the end of this will be the the forward slashing. So at the beginning and at the end, right? So yeah, that's how to comment. So just that's just a way to document your code. So for example, if I I'm just going to undo this. So if I want to tell the person who will be reading my code that this will return numbers, I can just go below here and do that comment and say this will return numbers, right? So I can just do that. So I'm just telling the person who will be reading the code that whatever is below here will return numbers. But this won't be run by JavaScript. JavaScript will ignore this. So this is just so that the person who will be reading your code understands what send lines of code does, right? So if I run this again, we should see those numbers, that array, but we shouldn't see this uh, this line of code here, which has that description. So yeah, that's how you create a function. So also, you can do different things inside this function. You can have like a lot of logic or a lot of uh, things that are grouped together that do the same thing uh, to achieve a uh, same goal, then you can call that function anywhere else and it will run whatever is inside that function instead of just rewriting everything that's inside the function every time you want to use that logic, right? So that's how you group same lines of code for a same purpose, right? In this case, it's not really a real world scenario where you want to use the numbers by just returning them but I'm just doing this so that I can explain what a function is and how to use it, right? But yeah, that's just a function in a nutshell. I hope you guys understand. But if you don't understand, just comment down below. Then I'll be willing to actually explain it further to you personally on in the comment. So just do that. Just comment down below. So that's it about the function. Yeah, we're going to move on to the next topic. Then the next topic that we're going to cover is conditional statements. So these are if, else, and else if statements. So for example, if you're working at a bar, then you actually want to make sure that a person's age is above 18. You literally need to see their ID, right? So they will actually show you their ID. And if you see that the age is below 18, then you let them know that they are not allowed to actually buy beer inside the bar. Then if their age is above 18, then they'll be able to get into the bar, right? Then in this case, an if statement will be if the person's age is above 18, then they're allowed, then else, or otherwise, if their age is below 18, then they're not allowed inside the bar. So that's basically if else statements in a nutshell. So I'll get into the code to explain it in a way that you can understand more further. So let's get into the code. So now we're gonna talk about the conditional statements. So I'm just going to remove everything here. So that's the if, the else if, and the else keywords. So we're gonna use that a lot. So let's say for example, with that example that I've given, let's say you're working at a bar and you actually want to check each person's ID and see if their age is above 18. If not, don't be able to get into the bar, but if that's the case, then can be able to get into the bar, right? So we just create an object using the knowledge that we've learned. So we're gonna use the const or we can use the var just to avoid confusing you guys. So we'll use the var, then the name of the variable, which is person. Then this person will have a name, which is my name, like that. Then a comma, then another key. So the age will be 17 in this case, which means uh, they are not qualified to get into the bar. So here we're just using common sense. We're not really programming anything at the moment. We haven't done that part, right? But just looking at this, you know that this person won't be qualified to actually get into the bar, right? So yeah, we have that and you know how to access that age. So if we do console log to test this, we'll just call console log. Then we'll say person, then a dot, then 
age to get their age. Then if I refresh the page, we should see 17 there. So that's their age, right? So you know how to access their age. Then now we're gonna get into the if statements. So we want to see if this person's age is above 18 or below 18, right? So if their age is above 18, they can get into the bar. Otherwise, they can't get into the bar, right? So for that, we'll just type the keyword if, then no spaces, or you can do space if you want. I'll just do space so that I can stay consistent. So type if, then a space, then brackets, then inside this brackets, that's why you have your condition, right? So for this, you just type the person's age. So you want to get the person's age, you say person.age. So this will access the person's age like we did over here. So we know that it is 17 by looking at that. So the person's age is 17. Then what we need to do is to write some condition just after this keyword there or that key. So we type space, make sure that this is space so that everything can be nicely formatted and so that JavaScript doesn't complain. So just type that part. So that's a part at its, at, at its own, then a space. Then after that, you actually have a condition. So there are different conditions, but the one that we want to work with is to check if this person's age is above 18, right? So that's why we have if. So if the person's age is above 18 but i can just say is above 18 like that javascript doesn't like that as you can see the the under the red lines at the bottom there so that means javascript doesn't like that and doesn't know why you're doing that doesn't understand that so in a programming way that's just english but in a programming way to actually see if this person's age is above 18 we need to use a math sample which is greater than so we just use a greater than sample then we need to make sure that this person's age is greater than 17 or rather it's greater than 18 or it is equals to 18 right because if the person's age is 18 they can be allowed to get into the bar but if they are less than 18 then they won't be able to get into the bar so we're using a greater than to make sure that this person's age is above 18. Then we need to use an equal sign to make sure that they are also 18. So if they're 18, they will also be allowed. So we can type 18 now, then that's fine. But I'll just create a space after the equal sign so that everything looks nicely formatted. But make sure that this part, make sure that after this part we have a space because if I don't remove that, uh, it doesn't really look nice. But you can also do that but I'll just make sure that I have that formatted nicely. So yeah, I'll do a greater than. So greater than means is it's greater. Uh, whatever is on the right hand side is actually, I mean, whatever is on the right, left hand side is greater than what's on the right hand side. Then an equal sign close to this greater than. So this means whatever is on the left hand side is equals to what's on the right hand side. So this is just basic math. So we're just checking if this person's age is greater than or it is equals to 18. Then if that's the case, then after the closing, after the closing bracket, we can do the curly braces again, just like when creating a function or when creating an object. Then inside here, you can just press enter just inside the, the curly braces in between them. Then inside here, we can just do console log with a string or a message that says is allowed so we're saying this person is allowed inside the bar because their age is greater or equals to 18 then we're gonna show that message otherwise we can type we can go below here and say otherwise like that that's just plain english but in programming we're not gonna use that we usually use the else statement so use else, then you don't really have to do that. That won't work. You can just do curly braces. So this part of having the brackets is ignored. So you, just, you can just type the keyword else, then the curly braces like that, right? 
So inside here, we can just type console.log, then say not allowed, right? So to explain it again before we actually see what's actually logged or what's displayed in the browser. So I'm saying this person's age is greater or equals to 18. Then we're going to show this message. Then else, this else just means otherwise. Then we're saying otherwise, we're going to show not allowed. I can't say otherwise the person's age, whatever. That's not the, 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 the way to go because we just have two conditions. If they're 18 or above 18, they're allowed. If they're below 18, they're not allowed, right? If they're below 18. So yeah, we're going to show this statement. So I'm just going to save this and run it. So because the person's age is 17, we get not allowed, right? That's because this person's age is 17. But if I change it to 18 or any age above 18, then it should show allowed. As you can see, we see allowed is allowed. So that's because the person's age is 18 or above 18, right? So yeah, to create an if statement, you just type the keyword if, then a space or can avoid the space, then the brackets, then inside the brackets, that's why you have your logic of actually conditioning that. So you can have your conditions in here. In our case, we are just saying the person's age is greater or equals to 18 then after the the last bracket we just do shift then the press the the button next to the p you do the double uh, curly braces then press enter then here we can say console the log then we can say allowed then otherwise or else which is recognized by JavaScript, you can just do the curly braces, then you can do console dot log not allowed. Right? So yeah, this is just the if else statements. It'll start from here. So whatever you type first, it'll start from there. So JavaScript will go here and check and it will see that okay, the person's age is actually equals to 18. So it passes this con condition there, then it will stop at this uh, if statement, right? It will never go to the else statement. It will, it will ignore this because this already passes. But if the person's age is below 18, then it will keep on going forward and see other statements that are available. So we only have one here, which is the else statement. So it will just run this because this, this is the last one. Uh, that's passing, right? So it will just display not allowed. But let's say, for example, we want to check if this person's age is like that, it's actually greater or equals to 18, then they're allowed. Then we also want to check if this person's name is Katleo, right? So as you can see, I've misspelled my name. I did that deliberately for this purpose. So we can go below here. We have another thing which is called else if. So we have the keywords next together, else, then space, then if. Make sure it's not else if like that close together. You need to make sure you separate the two words, else, then if. Then just after the if, you can just do the same thing that you do when you have the if statement just like that. So just inside the brackets, you can have your condition. So we want to make sure the person's name is actually got there, all right? So we can say person.name. Then we can say equals to, but it has to be double equal signs. It can't be one like that. You get an error. So inside here, we have to do two equal signs, which is just a, way, a simpler way to do it, to actually check if whatever is on the left, which is this, is equal to what's on the right. You can't do a single equal sign like that. It has to be double equal signs or triple equal signs. The triple ones are just used to absolutely check if the what's on the left is absolutely equals to what's on the right. But this way, you don't just ignore certain things. You don't be that strict, but the, the triple equal signs is a bit strict. So I'll use the single, the, the two equal signs then I'll just say like that. Then I can save the file. 
then you will check what if what's on the left is equal to what's on the right. So we know that person dot name is K A T L G O, but here we're saying K A T L E G O, right? So these are not equal, right? Because we have an E here just next to the E to the L, I mean, but here we don't have the E. So just at the end of the of the bracket, we also need to make sure that we have the curly braces done inside the curly braces. We can have a console log or uh, logic. So we just need to say allowed as well. So if their name is cut out, then they are allowed. But over here, because we have an error, these are not equal. So we get this part or rather this part because the person's age already is 18, right? So it will start here. Then if the if statement doesn't pass, it will go here. If the else, else if statement doesn't pass, then it will go here, which is the last statement. But we can also have another else if statement. So we can have as many else if statements as you want, but we can have uh, another else statement here. There can be only one else statement. So we need to make sure that there's only one else statement. We can have as many else if statements if there has been an if statement. If I remove the if statement, then this one pass. There has to be an if statement. So the if statement is, is very important. You can have as many of this. And you can also have as many of this as long as there's one of this at the top. And you can have one of this if there is one of this, right? So yeah, that's the way. So in this example here, we know that the person's age is 18. So it will go here. If this passes, then it will ignore everything that's down there. So if I save this and I run this, it will say allowed. And that's because this passed. But if I change this to 17, it will go here and see if it passes. Then, of course, it will fail because this person's age is 17, not equals to 18 or above 18. So this will fail. Then it will go below and check the else if statement, if there's any, or the else statement. If there isn't, if there isn't any of this, then we won't really get anything. If I save this and run, we won't get anything because this fails and there's nothing that backs it up. So this just this is just for backup. So we're checking if the person's name is Katleo. So the person's name is not Katleo there. As you can see, there's a spelling error. As you can see, these two are not equal. So if I save this, it'll go here and check if the person's name is Katleo. So in this case, as you know, by looking, it'll fail because the person's name is not Katleo because this is not equal to this, right? So this will fail as well. Then we'll go to the next statement, which is this. Then we just run there because that's an else statement. So the else statement will, also, will always run if the other statements didn't really uh, pass, right? So now we should know we should get not allowed, right? So this is because of the else statement. But if we change this to Katleo like that to make sure that this is equal to that, if I save the file, then go to the browser and run it, we should see allowed because it got here and it failed because this person's age is 17. Then he went here and checked if the person's name is equal to Gatleo. And in this case, it is. So it ran what's in that. Then it ignored everything else. So, yeah, that's it about the, the conditional statements. I hope you actually understood what this entails. If you didn't really understand, you can just let me know. Then I'll really be happy to help you. So let's move on to the next topic. Then the next topic that we're going to cover is arrays. So... Think of an array as a list so let me just give you an example so let's say you are a teacher right so you want to know how many students are in the class and you want to actually give each and every student a number so that they can be identified by that number right so what you do is in the first row of the class the first person in that first row will literally start counting from number one then the next person that's seen next to them will say number two then the next person say three until the last person in the last row of the class will say whatever number incremented to. So if there are 23 people in the class, then the last person will say 23, right? So that way, let's say for example, you want to issue a script to number 23, then all the rest of the class will be seated. Then whoever is containing the number 23 or whoever said 
23 during the counting will actually come up or stand up and come to the fourth or come to the front of the class and take their script right so that way we can actually identify each and every student by number right so in this way this is an array this is a list of numbers so each number identifies a student right so yeah that's just what a list is it's just a list it can be a list of anything it can be a list of tasks that you need to do today it can be a list of whatever you can think of right so let's get into the code so i can explain this further so let's go then the next thing that we're going to talk about which is also regarded as an object but it's not really an object it's an array but just give just treats it as an object data type so i'll show you how to create an array so to create an array all you need to do is to create a variable first like we'll be using variables a lot and the console log a lot so let's say for example we want to have a list of numbers right so we use numbers just just create a variable called numbers then equal sign then to create an array all you need to do is to use the square brackets so previously we were using the curly braces to create an object then here we are dealing with an array so we use the square brackets like that so that's you don't press shift when you do this so you press the button next to the p without pressing the shift first right so we'll get the square brackets then to actually have different values inside this array all you need to do is to type any number because we are storing an array of numbers so we'll type one then a comma to actually mention or store another number inside this array so we'll say three then a comma then six then a comma then eight those are the numbers that i want to store inside this array so it's one then a comma which means we want to have another value stored in here then which is three then a comma then we store another value which is six then a comma then another value which is eight then as you can see at the end here i don't have a comma but you can type a comma javascript is not strict so you don't give you an error if you do that but it's a great way to leave a comma at the end of the last value of the last value in your array so yeah that's an array we've actually start four numbers which is one three six and eight so we create an array like that so to access or see if that array exists or it's actually working fine we're going to use console log gonna use this a lot to test then inside the brackets we just type the name of the variable which is numbers then if i save this and go to the browser i'll just refresh it'll give us whatever free in there but if i press here we have this information here i'll just explain what this means up until here i'll not explain this part which has prototype and all that so as you can see if i if i press that again we have that so we've created an array by using the square brackets then inside there we have values then we separate the values by commas so we have one then a comma then three then a comma then six then a comma then eight right so if i press here we have this information so i'll just explain that so we see zero then a colon then a one right so previously we were dealing with objects so this is similar way with an object it looks the same so as you can see we have zero so this zero is basically a key like i said in object we have key value pairs so this is a key so if you want to see the definition of the word zero you just go in the dictionary and look for the word zero then it will tell you what zero means so in our case if you want to know what's stored inside zero we'll actually get one if you want to know what's stored inside one we'll get three if you want to know what's stored inside two we'll get six three we'll get eight then it ends there because we only have four numbers inside the the array cell so it's one three six and eight so those are four numbers in there that's why we have zero one two three and you might be asking why is it not starting at at one then all up until four because we have four numbers in there that's because in programming we start counting from zero so it's zero then going up we don't start from one like we normally do as people so that's why we start at zero so that's zero we have one at one we have three at two we have six at three we have eight 
like that. So they follow each other in that manner. So to actually show that this acts as an object, you can actually go inside here. So I'll just copy this and go below. So if we want to access this number here, like for example, I've given an example when you want to actually call the number 23 and want to give them a script. So a student with the number 23, you want them to get the script. You just call 23 and they'll come forward and get the script, right? So in that case, we want to give one their script, right? So to actually do that, to call them, what you need to do is to use the square brackets again after the variable itself. So you just type the name of the variable, then no spaces, then you just type the an opening and a closing square bracket. Let me undo this. So an opening and a closing square bracket. Then inside the square bracket, you just type whatever is here, whatever is here, right? So for zero, it will give us one. For one, it will give us three. For two, six. And three, it will give us eight, right? So these are called index indexes, right? So just using this uh, to access whatever is at that position. So if it was not programming, we will start at one, but because we are programming, we start at zero. So if you want to access one, we'll use zero because as, as you can see, zero here, that will get one. So if I type zero over here, then we should see one in the console. So if I refresh this, then as you can see, we get one there. So that's because over here at position zero or at index zero, we get one. So that's why we get one there. If I type one, Inside here, if I remove zero, then I type one, then I should be getting this three because it is at index one or at position one because it start counting as zero, like I said. So one is at zero, three is at one, six is at two, eight is at three. So for one, we get three. So if we're calling, if you want to see three, we'll type one, so we'll get that three. If you want to see six, we'll type two then refresh, then we see we see six. And if you want to see eight, we should type three. So three is eight. So we'll type three, then we should see eight if I refresh, as you can see. Then also we can store different things inside an array, just like in an variable, we can store different things. So over here we were just storing numbers. So just copy this line of code to below here. Then I'll paste it there. Then I'll say uh, fruits. So what will be stored inside this variable will be fruits. So this is an array. Then I'll remove everything that's here. Then inside here, I'll store different fruits. But because, like I said, if you want to type words, you need to use strings, right? So we use single quotes or double quotes. So I'll type banana like that. Then after... The, the, the closing code, just type a comma to separate the values, then space, or if you don't want, you can leave the space. Then I'll type another fruit, like orange. Then another comma, I'll type uh, pen, apple, right? So then I'll save the file. Then if I copy this and put it, let me just remove, or let me just replace this over there, then I'll remove this part there. So we have that. So we're only accessing the fruits. So you should see uh, it should it should actually show us everything that's there. So if I go to the browser and refresh, we see the list of the fruits because in the console log we said we only want to see the fruits. So we want to test and see how it looks like. So it looks like that. Then if we press this, we're going to see that we get those numbers again. So it's zero, one, two, going all the way up based on how many values you have in the array because we have three values we'll start from zero all the way up to two because like i said we start counting from zero so if you want to access the weight banana or the fruit banana or, or the, so if you want to access the weight banana or the fruit banana all we need to do is to access is to actually access or use this key here which is zero or that index or that position so after the weight fruits i'll just copy this down then oh after the word fruits we're gonna use the 
the square brackets then inside the square brackets we just type that number so this is number zero one two if i had another value or another fruit it would be at, at index or position three so in our case right now is one zero one two then going forward it'll be th three four five going all the way up right but we have, because we have three it'll be we only have zero one two right so like i said start from zero so if we want to access the first element in the in the array or the first item we use zero right so if i save that and go to the browser and refresh we should see banana because that's the first element at index zero or at position zero if i want to see orange i should use one because it's at position two and two is one in programming because we start from zero right then i can use one there then I should see orange because it's at position one. Then if I refresh, I should see orange. Then pineapple, you would use two. Then you should see pineapple, right? But if I actually use a number that's not actually identified because we only have three items and because it start coming from zero, it will, it will be zero, one, two. But now I'm accessing three, which is not available here so we don't have the next item which is at position three or index three so this should give us undefined because we don't have that value in there right we don't have that item inside the array at that index because we only end at two not three then right now i'm just going to explain what this means so this length just means uh, how many items actually available inside this array so we have three items so it's, it's zero i mean it's one then two then three so this length actually uses our way of counting it'll count from one so it'll be one two then three that's why it's three there if i add another item in here for example i add apple itself then i save this then the length should be four now so we should see four because we have for items which is one two three four right so yeah the length is just how many items are available inside that array and actually if you want to see that in your code just type the name of the variable that has the data type of an object which is an array or an a variable that's an array in a case which is fruits then just after the name of the variable just type a dot then you can type length then that will access this over here. So now we can save that. And now we can actually refresh the page and we see that there are four items in here. So it's one, two, three, four. So we're using the length. It will give us how many items are available inside this fruits array, right? So yeah, that's it about the arrays. You can actually expand your knowledge on this because there are a lot to learn about the arrays this is just to give you like a foundation to actually start from when learning arrays to make it simpler so i hope you understood what arrays do and how to actually use them right so yeah that's it about the arrays let's go to the next topic then the next topic that we're gonna cover is about loops right a loop is just a way to actually go through each and everything in the list that you've created which is an array and actually modify the array or do something that you want to do based on whatever goal you have right so just to give you an example what a loop looks like in a real world so let's say for example given that example of actually counting the students so for example you want to see if each and every student has written their homework right so what you need to do to actually identify if a student has written their homework because you know students a bit tricky sometimes they can trick you so all you need to do is to go through each and every student's book to see if they've written the homework right so you you open their book and see if the content of the homework is there and is fully there then that person you can let that person stay in the class then if they've not written the homework then you send them out of the class right so this is how an array behaves it goes through each and every element in the array when you want to use an array so that's just how a loop behaves. 
so let's get into the code so that i can explain this in the code so let's go so the next topic that we're going to cover is the loops so i'll just remove everything here so we have different type of different types of loops but i'll only cover maybe two of them or one of them that's important so the one that i want to talk about that you're mostly going to use is the for loop so to do that you just type for so the keyword for then the brackets then inside here you can have uh, the actual expression so let's say for example we have given that example that i've given so we create var then we have students we have students like that then with an array inside the array we're gonna have each number that is students that identifies each student so let's say we have five students in the class so each student has their number which identifies them so it'll be one two three four then a comma then five right so inside here if you want to actually go through each and every student and see if they've written the homework we'll actually do a for loop by just typing students of then i mean you need to type this in a similar manner because this is a this is plural to identify this is a list so it is plural because it contains different things so students but here you need to type it in a singular way so student so this will represent each and every student so it will start here then go here then go here then go here then go there right so it will go through each and every student that's why you're typing it in a singular manner then you can type it then we, after the off keyword so it's is the name of the variable that you want to create so this is just a variable you can type anything you can type a t or an s for student or anything but i'm just using this so that it makes sense so this is a variable then you need to make sure that there's a space after that name then the off keyword so we're saying we want to create a student variable which has values which is on the right hand side right so we're saying student of students like that so this will contain the first value when it begins then after it has gone that value or got to that point it will move on to the next item in the list which will be two then this will go to the next item which is three next item which is four next item which is five so to make this in a simpler way so the first thing we write in the for loop inside the brackets is the variable that we want to create for accessing each and every element in the array right so here we just wanted to type student to make it singular because it will be accessing each and everything each and every item in the array when it begins right so it's having the name of the variable which is student it can be s like that then a space then the off keyword this will tell javascript that what's on the left will be accessing information of what's on the right right so here we're saying s of students right let me undo this so of students so we're saying s s will be one when it begins then it'll be two when it moves on three four five until it gets here then it'll just stop right so yeah that's how it behaves then at the end of the bracket then we're gonna do curly braces then we're gonna do console log here then we're gonna run we're gonna type the name of the variable here which is s or you can type the students it will just display this uh five times because it was there are five items here so it's one two three four five right so there are five five items here so if i type students it will just run it will just display this array five times so as you can see you see one two three four five so it will display that five times so a for loop just runs this array uh based on the length of the array so the length of the array like there are five there are five items in the array so that's the length so it will run five times right if i add another value here like seven or six or seven if i save this then run or refresh the page we should get that six times so it's one two three four one two three four five six right 
so there are six items in the raid that's why it runs six times but for the purpose that we will usually use it for we usually type the variable which is this one so i'll take it back to student without the s so it's singular so student then i'll just put that in here then what you will do is it will go through each and every thing that's inside the range and every element so there are six elements so it will start and say one and return it then two then return it three four five seven so if i refresh the page now we should see those numbers so one two three four five seven so it goes through each and every element in the array right so let's say for example using that example that i've given we want to actually determine if each student has written a homework right so inside the array we can have different data types so for example in this case we'll use an object because that's an easier way to do this so we have an object then we have the name of the person so inside this object we have just different objects and this each individual object just uh, has a person object it's just a has a structure of a person so there's a name it will be cut like that then a comma then homework or i can say written homework if i can type it correctly written homework like that then a colon to give it a value then i'll say true or i can say yes like that as a string but i'll just use a boolean which is say which is true i can just type true without the double quotes because javascript understands that then i can just copy everything there then i'll do a comma to have another object inside this array and so this will be title then this will be false so definitely in the homework then a comma then i have another person so to copy this line of code down without having to press control and see you have you just have to select it or go to the end of that line or anywhere in that line then press shift alt then the arrow down this will take everything that's there and copy it down so now we're gonna say john then we're gonna say the written the homework so we say true so we just have those three people inside the classroom so inside this for loop we'll actually yeah we'll just print them just like that we'll just see this different objects here being printed down so if i refresh that we'll see the different students so with the name my name there katlea or then tato then john the first one has written the homework the second one has not the third one has so we get that so if we actually want to actually have that logic of determining if they're free in the homework or not and send them out of the classroom or they can stay in the classroom i'll remove this part then i'll do the if statement so if uh, the student no students but student so this student will actually grab this whole object and it will just stick to that when it starts then after it finishes it will go to next student then after it finishes it will go to next student so you go through each and every student so we say if student dot uh written homework so now we are seeing the student so like i said we are right here when we start so we say student dot has written homework so I, so we are accessing this key here which is written homework then we don't need to say true like that we don't need to say the value is true like that we, ju we can just say like that we can just put it like that we don't need to do any other condition javascript will understand that okay here we want to check if this key has the value true or its value is true or if it contains something if it contains something then it also be true so yeah but in our case we just want to check if it's true or false so we can just write it like that or if you want to to make things simpler to 
to grasp you can say equal signs so like i said you need to make sure that it's double equal signs or triple equal signs but the triple one is a bit strict so you need to be careful with that so here we just need to type true so we're saying if student dot written homework is true or if they've actually written homework so that's why we're saying that that's why i ran that condition then if that's the case you can say console dot log console.log then we say stay in class because they've written homework so we say stay in class then else which is just a way to say otherwise we can I'll just copy this and paste it here so we say otherwise uh, get out of class right if they've not written homework which means the value the reader homework key contains the value false then it will go here and send them out of the class so for Tato it will actually send them out of the class so to actually show it in action I'll just just before the actual command here I'll just type student dot name so that I can see the name of the person that is actually sent out or who stays in the class so stay student dot name then a comma to separate the command and whatever we want to see first so if i save this then run the browser as you can see it says let me just put a colon just before each word of the command then space right then for that it will do it like that so it says cut level. so that's the first person inside the array so it's this it will start there then go uh through the whole array right so we only have three elements here so we only have three items rather so we start there the name is cut level, so that's why it's written cut level first then it says stays stay in class that's because they're free in the homework it's true so they can stay in class the next person is tato it says get out of class that's because the real homework is false then for john is true so it's true there so they should stay in class that's why it says stay in class so yeah i'm just combining everything that we've learned with the conditional statements and to understand the for loops so you can just do that to create a for loop so the for keyword then the brackets then inside the brackets to loop through an array you just do just type the the variable that you want to create in our case a student that we want to access each and every student then the off keyword and make sure there's spaces in between the off keyword before and after the, the off keyword then just on the right hand side of the off keyword is the actual array where you want to access this uh we want to access the values right so yeah that's how you create an, a for loop and there's a different way of doing this so instead of doing it this way we can actually create a variable like this just the way we create it so we say variable then we say item so this item just basically says each item of the array or we can say student again student again but we, we this student won't return the actual student it will just return a number or the index of each and every item in the array so as i've mentioned before the first item is at index zero the second one is one the third one is two right because it's the country from zero so we say val student but the best way to do this to so actually use the keyword index because it will not return the actual student it will just return the index of the first or whatever uh, item we're currently on so we say index then we say initially it will be equals to zero so we're saying the variable we're creating a variable called index and initially it will start at zero because we're going to start at index zero which is there but if you want to start from index one it will start from here but we want to start from scratch so we say zero then a semicolon then space then we're gonna limit how this array will behave i mean so now we're gonna limit how this loop will behave so we're gonna say the index 
should be less than the length of the student's array. So we're going to say the index should be less than students dot length. And as I've done this before, the length will just return how many items are actually in this array. So there are actually three items. But because we are actually studying from because we're actually starting from zero when counting, we need to make sure that we make sure that the index is less than the, the length. So this will actually end at two, not at three, because the length is three. We're saying it should be less than the length. So the length is the length here is three. So we're gonna stop at two because we have zero, one, two. So it will only contain this. So then after that we're gonna have a semicolon at the end of the length word then we're gonna say you're gonna increment the index incrementing just in just make sure that that makes sure that so incrementing makes sure that the, the index keeps going through each and every element in the array so we're gonna say plus plus or we can say plus equals to one so that's the same thing but we usually say plus plus like that to avoid writing a lot of things so we just say plus plus index plus plus so just to explain everything that i've written here so we create a variable called index and this index initially it will be zero or at the beginning it will start from zero because we're going to start counting from zero in the array then a semicolon then the next thing that we want to write is we want to limit how many elements we want to access in the array so we only have three items in here but because we start counting from zero we need to make sure that we limit it to end at two because the last item is at index two and the trick to do that is to actually access the length and just limit it to the index to be less than the length of that array right because the length actually start counting from one so it'll be one two three right so this this for loop will end at two then a semicolon at the end then the last thing here we just say index which is this and it is zero at the beginning so every time this loop runs it will add one to it so it will, it will start at zero which is this one then because of this it will go to one because it will increase this zero to one so it will go to next element which is this which is at index one then again it will run then this will be two, so it will go to this element because previously it was one, so it will go to two because of this by incrementing whatever value we are currently on. Start at zero, then one, then two. And it won't go to three because of this part here. So this part makes sure that it limits the loop running uh, limited, limitlessly, so it will, the index should be less than the student's erase length right so the length is three but we want to only access up to index two so we're just saying less than the student's length so now if i run this it will give an error because we do not have this variable called student we're only using a variable called index here so if i run this should get an error as you can see because student is not defined so to, to avoid to go around the error what we need to do we're gonna use a different approach because we are using an index instead of the actual element. Here we are using the actual element. So now we're gonna select each and every instant of this student word. So we're gonna press Control D. It will select each and every instant. So there's three of them. Then we're gonna say students. So we're gonna type the name of the array itself, which is that one. Then we're gonna uh, create or type the square brackets then inside the square brackets we're going to put the actual index so the variable index so as we've learned previously you can actually do this students then zero then you know that index zero is the first item in the array so to access this part so if you type one it will go to next uh, element which is at index two i mean at index one which is this part so it will go here so that's the same thing if because the array or uh, the loop starts from zero, which is this part, it'll go here. So that's why we say index there. The index will be zero there. 
so it will be as if it's zero when it starts then after it increments to one it will be one and so on until the loop ends right so now if i run this it should solve that problem and we should say should see the same thing as you see there so there are different ways to actually create the loop itself based on what you want to achieve so yeah that's it about the loops once again if you don't understand something just let me know in the comment then i'll explain it a bit further so yeah this that's it about the loops let's go to the next topic the next topic that we're going to talk about is the dom so this stands for document object manipulation so we use this to actually do different things on a website so let's say for example you want to do something when a user clicks on a button or on a link so you determine you make a decision of what happens next when a user makes an action right so when they click on a button to sign up you take them to a page for signing up or if that button is a is to actually send them up get their details and send them to a database or a backend you literally do that so whatever behavior or whatever you want to do when a user does a certain action you'll do that using the dom to actually make a decision right so let's get into the code so i can explain the dom in a simpler way so let's go so the last topic that we're going to talk about is the dom so we're going to be manipulating the DOM itself. So we're going to be using HTML in this case because we'll be interacting with different elements in the browser. So this is for front-end development. So in the HTML file, just going to the HTML file, just before the body you're going to have, or after the body rather, or before the script tag, just create a button. Then in that button, I'm going to have the word uh, click me. Then we're gonna save the file, right? Then we're gonna create an ID. Here we're gonna have an ID. So just do everything that I'm doing. If you don't know HTML, just do everything that I'm doing, exactly how I'm doing it. Then inside the double quotes, you're gonna type BTN, which stands for button, or you can write anything that you, re you will remember. So I'm just typing anything short. Then in your main .h your main.js file, I'm going to remove everything here. So to actually learn about the DOM, just I'm just going to give you the basics, then you can learn everything further. So we have selectors. So selectors is just a way of selecting your different elements in the HTML file. So we created a button here with the ID of BTN. So for that, to access this button itself, instead of everything else, we're gonna access this button. So for that, we're gonna use its ID because this is just to identify it individually so we're gonna say variable then we're gonna say button then we're gonna say in equal sign so we're creating a variable called a button to represent this button here then for the dom what you need to do is to use the keyword document so just type document this just means the actual document like your page itself so on your page you have this button here right so on the document we have that button or on the page we have that button then you can type a dot then to access that button we're gonna use this ID like I said to get this button itself so you need to type you need to type get element by ID get element by ID then call it by just typing that uh, brackets those brackets so this is a method or a function so it will actually access whatever you're going to put in here so if i just save this it might give us an error but because javascript is not really yeah uh, at least it, it has given us an error and that's because it requires something inside this brackets just like when you're typing when you're using console log inside the brackets you type something so when you type this method you should have something in here usually a string and always a string actually so we have a button with an id called btn right so we can just use this id anything you type in here then just paste in it there but make sure that it's inside double quotes or single quotes or back text because we need a string so btn like that now if i save the file it should get rid of the error so now this button is actually 
the same as this button and we can do different things to this button like we can decide what happens when the user clicks on that button for example in our case we just change each text so right now we have click me inside the button so the button when it's shown it will just have the words click me but when the when the user clicks on that button we just want to change it to uh, maybe i was clicked or you clicked me so the text will change when they click on the button so for that we just need to type the button so say button dot on click so there's a method called on click so to actually this method actually accepts a function or a callback i'll not explain what a callback is this is just basically a function that also accepts a function right and in that other function that, you, that it accepts it can have some logic right so we're gonna create a function so i'm just gonna go below here we're gonna create a function of actually explain what a function is and how to create it so we're gonna create a function like that with the keyword function then we're gonna say change button text like that then the brackets then the square the square the the, the curly braces then inside here we're gonna actually determine what happens when a user clicks on that button right so now we're going to access the button and say button dot text content so text content just basically means what's inside the button so whatever is in here in between the the opening and closing tag so what's inside there we're gonna modify it right so we're gonna access the text content at the moment is click me so it says click me right now we're gonna change it so we're gonna modify it by saying you click me so when you click on that button you go it will change to you click me so yeah we just using the equal sign after the test content and giving a string so it will change to that also you can just have a number then when the user clicks on that button it will, it will display the, the number two but I'll just do a string like that, right? So over here, like I said, we're gonna use the on click. So this will only happen when a user clicks on this specific button with the ID of BTN, right? So this is the button. So when the user clicks on it, so the on click just means when a user clicks on this button. Then we're gonna use an equal sign. Then we're gonna specify this function. So we're just gonna put the function there so now we can actually save the file so we say the button that dot on click so when the user clicks on the button then we're gonna have an equal sign then the function to run right so the function that will run when the user clicks on the button so we've created the function here also you can also create the function here you can just copy everything that's here and remove this and paste it like that that will work the same way so it's on click you'll run this function but just to simplify it so that it's readable, we're going to do that, right? So when the user clicks on the button, it will run this function, which is here. So it will change the test content to you click me instead of click me. So now if I run the code, we have that button here. Uh, we have that button there. Let me zoom it. So this is the button. Now if I click on this button, it should change to you click me. So I'm going to click on it. So now it changed to you clicked me. So that's how you, you you deal with the DOM. So you can do different things when the user clicks on a button, on a link, on the form, when they submit a form, like different things. So that's how you deal with the on click event. So this is called an event. So this is an event that happens when a user clicks on a button or clicks on anything. It can be a button or it can be on a text or whatever, right? So I'll just create another example. So gonna have a paragraph that has the number zero or one so that that's the paragraph then we, it's gonna have the id of p or para like that for identifying this paragraph then i'm just gonna copy this line of code below by pressing shift alt then an arrow down it will copy everything that's there then i'll say p or para again then 
of course the id is parallel as you can see there the id is parallel so we're getting the element by id which is parallel right then because this is for the button i'll get rid of that then for the paragraph we say paragraph when they click on it on click there are a lot of events that you can look up but i'll just go to a few of them but i'll go with the on click again then i'll say function i'll just create the function here to make things easier so I'll say function then i'll say increment me or increment number right so this will increment this number here but it's not a number because it's inside html it'll be a string but we'll change that into a number so just create the function like that then in here we can actually have a parameter i haven't discussed this with you a function can have as many parameters as it can have you can and you separate the parameters by commas so you can have a name you can have age and you can use these parameters inside your code in here right but in this case we only need an event so this event comes with the on click so if you type anything inside the function that's inside so if you create a function and you put that function inside uh the on click event you can access the actual element itself right so we are accessing the paragraph so we can say event dot target so everything that's here so this means this basically means this so we're just saying the events target which is the paragraph which is para which is that so we can say event dot target then we can say the text content like that this will just give us what's inside that paragraph which is one so i can just actually create a variable like we usually do i can say number cross sign then i paste that this will return that one which is that but like i said this that will be a string because it's from HTML. So to turn that into a number, we just need to type number like that. Then I'll paste everything inside the brackets there. So just type number and it'll turn everything that's inside there into a number. And it needs to be make sure it needs to make sure that it is a number. Can just I can't do the same thing with the buttons text because that's not a number, but because this is actually a number, then it will turn into a number so yeah for that then i'll just do number then plus plus this will increment the number by one if I, I can also do plus equals to one that's the same thing but i'll do plus plus then it'll increment that number right then it'll inc increment that number right so now if i go into the page itself then refresh then if i click on this one it should increment it every time i click on it so it should change from one to two to three all the way up so let's go so if i click on it it's not working so we need to actually console log to see what's happening like we're gonna use console log a lot to see what's going on so i'll do that then i'll paste then i'll go to i'll press f12 to open the console then when i press on the one i don't see anything right so something is definitely wrong so let me actually lock the para itself to see what it is so now we get that paragraph but the problem when you click on it you only get that number one so it's not really a number it's still a string so i think that's why it's not really incremented right so let me actually Oh, the problem is it's actually because we're not actually uh, setting the actual value that's inside here. So it will always be one. So we need to make sure that we increment it in the UI as well. So we just need to say event or target as well. Then text content. So text content. Then we need to set it like we did previously. Or you can do para dot text content. This is the same thing as saying event dot target. So you can say paragraph 
the test content. So we're seeing this paragraph for test content, which is what's inside, which is one. Then we need to set it to the number. Now I think it should work. Now if I save and refresh, then every time I press here, it should increase that number. So as you can see, it started at one, then two, then three. Even in the UI, if I get rid of this, every time I click on it, it increases as you can see, right? Also, if you want to decrement this, you can use minus minus or minus or minus. You can use minus minus or minus equals to one. That's the same thing as say minus minus. So I'll save, then refresh, then it start at one, then it should go to minus one or zero rather because the next number from uh, one going down is zero, then you should go to minus one and all the numbers below, as you can see. So how that's how you can deal with the clicks. Then also you can do this by using the mouse. So if someone hovers the mouse on top of an element or on a button, something should happen, right? So something should happen, right? So in this case, we use on mouse, on mouse enter on I think we should use on mouse yeah on mouse enter so immediately when they enter let's say this is a button so immediately when they put their mouse on top of the button then it should do it should run this function here so that's on mouse enter so there's on mouse down there's on mouse um, leave that means when you actually leave, take off your mouse from whatever the element it is so if this is a button then i put my mouse on top of it then i leave the button i take my mouse away from that button then this function should run but in this case when i use on mouse enter this means when you actually hover your mouse on top of that element right so i'm gonna get rid of this so now i'm gonna refresh the page so now if i put my mouse on top of this element there so let me it will start one but if I put a mouse on top of the element, which is that one, which is the paragraph, it should decrement that. So I'll just go slowly. And because this may be big, it might start before I actually even go straight to the number itself. So now if I put this here, it changes to zero. If I go again, it's one. Then if I go again, it's two. If I go again, it's three. So every time you, your mouse enters this paragraph it will change the values you can see without actually clicking on it right so that's on mouse enter so that's when you hover your mouse so like i said there are a lot of events that you can use so those are just a few to give you an introduction to the dom like there's a lot of to learn about the dom that's just a few things to learn to make sure i make a start to learn the dom or javascript in a whole so yeah, that's going to do it, guys. I'm going to end this video here. That's everything that I've prepared for you guys. So those are all the fundamentals that you need to create the projects and everything. So thank you guys so much for watching. That's going to do it, guys. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so you can notify whenever I release new content. And lastly, like this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.